John Keel, is a world-renowned expert with unidentified flying objects, and has written numerous books and articles on the subject. A self-described agnostic, he made this statement. Thousands of books have been written on the subject of demonology, which is the ancient and scholarly study on monsters and demons. The manifestations and occurrences described in this literature are identical to the UFO phenomena. Victims from demonic possession suffered from the same medical and emotional symptoms as the UFO contactees. Dr. Jacques Vallée has addressed the United Nations on UFOs and was a model in Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He is the author of eight books of unidentified flying objects and has been widely recognized as the premier investigating scientist in the realm of this research. In his book, Messengers of Deception, he says, an impressive comparison can be made between UFO occupants and the popular conception of demons. And in his book, Confrontations, he writes, the medical examinations to which abductees are said to be subjected, often accompanied by sadistic sexual manipulation, is reminiscent of the medieval tales of encounters with demons. He also made this statement, I believe when we speak of UFO sightings, as instances of space visitations, we are looking at the phenomenon on the wrong level. We are not dealing with successive waves of visitation from space, we are dealing with a control system. And he states, UFOs are the means through which man's concepts are being rearranged. They are engaging in a worldwide enterprise of subliminal seduction. Jacques Vallée, is, at least at that time when he wrote that book, was an agnostic. Interesting that he comes to basically the same conclusions I do as a Christian from my research. And he said uh, about UFOs, they're real, but they're not physical. They're messengers of deception. And this was based on his research of about 20 years. They seem to be psychologically preparing, setting us up for some ultimate delusion that is too horrible even to imagine as yet. I would agree with that. In Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that first film that came out about UFOs, the house that the mother and, and little boy were living in, you know, the toys began running around and screws unscrewed in the presence of UFOs. What the film was saying was the same people that run UFOs run haunted houses. And I would say that's absolutely true. If you believe in the God of the Bible, by default, you must acknowledge the reality of demons. Most people do not recognize the fact that the Jewish faith, Christianity, and Islam are based on the very same God, the creator of this world. All these faiths are adamant about the reality of demons. But the presence of demons has been grossly misunderstood and misused. It is imperative to dismiss the claims that can be explained. The majority of accounts of demons are based on emotions, lack of understanding and pretentious motives. However, there are a substantial number of reports which are believable, with creditable witnesses. It also requires a spiritual understanding, something which the skeptics don't have. Many people who dismiss these ideas, will not believe if they don't see something physical. A spiritual understanding is similar to the wind. You can't touch it or see it, but you can experience its presence. This is a perfect analogy of UFOs and the alien greys. These beings are highly intelligent, their first objective is to deceive man. Judging our modern culture, they are very successful. The Bible and early Jewish writings call them Nephilim. That was his power. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Most people, by default, ignore the idea of demons in our world. But if you have an encounter yourself, your life will change. Many people attribute their encounters as ghost, paranormal activity or UFOs. I hear people refer to spirits as a dead relative watching over them, but most accounts have an evil nature. The majority of reports are based on emotions and misunderstanding. This is a contributing factor to disbelief. The truth is, the majority of people will not have an encounter strong enough to force the realization. This is something we should be thankful for. 
How could we possibly live day to day, with the knowledge of something so horrible? When you encounter evil face to face, there is no escaping it. Anyone who has, will tell you their life has changed forever. My own confrontation is directly responsible for my belief in God. Satan is presented as a figure who wants to test human beings, who hopes that he can draw human beings away from the worship of God to his side in this conflict. The Apocrypha and early Jewish writings have much to say about demons. I believe many of these writings have a core of truth, but it requires a certain amount of discernment. The Testament of Solomon is a very intriguing book. He is given a ring from God which grants him power over all demons. He then calls forth the leading demons to identify them, and put them to work building the holy temple. Using the ring given him by Gabriel, Solomon summons the demon leader, to enslave all of the other demons. And I questioned him, and he promised to bring me in bonds all the unclean spirits. One by one, he puts them to work building the foundations of his temple. So what's the idea here? That if you can somehow tap into the good side of the force, you can use that to subdue the dark side and even to cause the dark side to work for good. I think we can see the use of demons as actually a way of saying that the temple is of divine origin. It wasn't a bunch of stone cutters and bricklayers that built the temple. It was these divine beings that Solomon was able to control and force to spin the hemp and cut the marble and put bricks on top of one another. Jesus refers to these accounts and the power Solomon had over them. Sometime near the year, 30 AD, a crowd gathers in a small village around a lake called Gennesaret. Here the residents of this Roman providence called Judea, witness a miracle. In the process of healing a man Jesus is accused of having a demon. In his rebuke, he refers to the testament of Solomon and says he has greater power. This very statement gives legitimacy to the testament of Solomon, at least we know there is a core of truth here. Luke chapter 11 verse 31. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation, and shall condemn them, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. He says this in the middle of an exorcism of demons. He says, for behold someone greater than Solomon is here. Why doesn't he say greater than King David? No, greater than Solomon. The theme of demons in the Bible is very real. If you are not aware, then you are vulnerable. There are a limited amount of demons in this world. The book of Baruch says there were 409,000. But there is no way to really know. This means there is a limited amount which they can do. The nature of demons is similar to the nature of people. Demons can be meek, and they are vicious, and every combination in between. The Jewish Midrash explains some of their qualities. Noah took demons into the ark and thus preserved their species. A demon named Og went with Noah to plant the vineyard and made a condition with him not to interfere in any way with his work, or he would injure him. Demons are also known as the hairy ones, as the prophet describes in Isaiah chapter 13. The word means demoniac agency as well as flames. And when we are told that Pharaoh's magicians imitated Moses' performance of miracles, it means that they did this through the agency of demons. As Pharaoh's magicians worked their imitation of Moses' miracles through demons, they were unable to imitate the third plague, since demons cannot bring forth anything smaller than a barley corn. With the crow of the cock announcing the approaching dawn of day, the power of demons diminishes, their power being for the most part confined to night only.